Some people are just built for the NBA. Steph Curry hitting one of the most iconic shots in February of 2016. Michael Jordan hitting the most iconic shot in the 1989 playoffs. And Russell Westbrook being the first player to average a triple-double since Oscar Robertson, along with winning the MVP. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a player that we could be talking about of the likes of those three within the next 15 years. And that player is Scoot Henderson, a guy that's getting less credit in this year's draft because there's an all NBA generational center just so happens to be in the same class with Victor Webb and Yama. But Scoot Henderson deserves all the credit in the world because he the like of Wemby is also a generational talent. A pure slasher at the G League level, a player that shows hints of Russell Westbrook and Derrick Rose, but a guy that isn't afraid of shooting at the same time. A player that knows how to defend but is a little bit too young to fully grasp the idea of defending at the highest level. With that all that being said, Let's talk about Scoot Henderson. Scoot Henderson is a 19 year old kid that is currently playing for the G League Ignite. But before we talk about his G League career, let's talk about his high school career. Scoot was born in Georgia, played his high school ball at Kell High School in Georgia, and averaged 32 points per game and won his class's player of the year, which obviously with a guy of his talent, you kind of expect for that to happen. But all of that being said, he transitioned and took the G League route out of high school over a college route or an overseas route, which personally I think has worked out just well. And it's worked out well for a majority of talent that has decided to go that route. Now, Scoot Henderson has averaged a little over 17 points per game in his first year in the G League. But with that being said, you may be wondering, how is it that you believe that he is a generational talent? Well, I'll bring it up to you that he is elite at finishing at the rim. As I said earlier in the video, bringing up aspects of Russell Westbrook and Derrick Rose, while also having the upside of being a better defender than them. Playing at six foot two or six foot three, depending on who you ask, but also plays much bigger than that. Personally, I think he has all the talent in the world, and I think that he has the capabilities of one day becoming one of the better two-way players in the NBA. Like a lot of elite NBA talent, Scoot Henderson was holding multiple offers at the end of his high school career. Not just multiple, but how about four at the end of his sophomore season? Holding offers from Ole Miss, Florida, Florida State, and Georgia Tech, while acquiring more Division I offers at the end of his complete high school career. But having four offers at the end of your sophomore season is pretty insane. You have to be an elite level talent to acquire those offers and by that time in your career. So Scoot Henderson should be a no shot, you know, no question mark type of player coming into the NBA when you look at his high school resume. Now, obviously, high school is not everything, and as I mentioned earlier, his G League stats have something a little bit left to be desired. But I want to make the argument that in reality, 17, little over 17 points per game, along with a good assist number, with that being 6.6, is actually really solid especially for a first year guy playing against real competition high school is one thing but playing against grown men that have been playing their entire lives is another completely different thing scoot has obviously dominated in the g league and against these grown men now thinking about prospects in the past or current players that are in the g league you may see different players and you see, well, Luca Garza is averaging like 30 points per game. And how is he not some top prospect? Well, when we think about G League players, when we think about guys like Scoot, we think about the upside. What we're looking at when we talk about players like him is if we can watch them and see that they're adapting to the game. Are they really learning? Are they playing well? How are they just their surroundings? Are they adapting well to it? And with Scoot, we've really noticed that he coming out of high school, joining this brand new system has played extremely well and has shown a ton of upside. Now, I don't want to put the pressure of him being Russell Westbrook 
on the shoulders of him already before his career technically even starts. But if a guy like me, if I'm Scoot and I see my draft board and I see, oh, he's projected to go second, even sometimes projected to go third because of Brandon Miller, I'm like, what have I done to deserve this? In reality, nothing. I mean, he deserved to go number one, but because of Victor Webb and Yama, it's almost insane, right? We don't know what Victor's going to be, and I don't have any hate towards the player. I think Victor's going to be a great player as long as he stays healthy, but as Scoot has said in multiple interviews, as multiple GMs have said in different interviews, is that Scoot would be the number one overall pick in just about any other draft class. With that being said, there's no reason that he shouldn't be a consensus top two pick. I like Brandon Miller out of Alabama. I think that he's going to be a great talent, but I don't think that he's the number two overall selection. I think Scoot has been a better player in his G League career playing against arguably better competition. So Scoot should be a number two pick, if not the number one pick, if they decide to you know surprise us, which I give a one in a million chance at happening. But personally, I love Scoot Henderson as a prospect and as a player. I think that he is going to be arguably the best player in this draft just because of Wemby's injury issues that could arise. But I think personally that Scoot is going to be a fantastic player, potential MVP winner down the line and a potential elite defender. But with that being said, that was my analysis on Scoot Henderson. A video on Victor Webb and Yama should be coming out within the next coming days. If you have enjoyed, please remember to like, subscribe. It's Ben Jelson. Peace out.